it's only because of their stupidity that they're able to be so sure of themselves. If you find someone who makes you smile, who checks up on you often to see if you're okay, who watches out for you and wants the best for you, who loves and respects you, don't let them go. People like that are hard to find. You do not need to leave your room. Remain sitting at your table and listen. Do not even listen, simply wait, be quiet, still and solitary. The world will freely offer itself to you to be unmasked, it has no choice, it will roll in ecstasy at your feet. Start with what is right rather than what is acceptable. Don't bend, don't water it down, don't try to make it logical, don't edit your own soul according to the fashion. Rather, follow your most intense obsessions mercilessly. I no longer know if I wish to drown myself in love, vodka or the sea. Everything that you love, you will eventually lose, but in the end, love will return in a different form. Anybody who preserves the ability to recognize beauty will never get old. I never wish to be easily defined. I'd rather float over other people's minds as something strictly fluid and non-perceivable, more like a transparent, paradoxically iridescent creature rather than an actual person. We live in an age which is so possessed by demons that soon we shall only be able to do goodness and justice in the deepest secrecy, as if it were a crime. Do not waste your time looking for an obstacle maybe there is none. I'm tired, can't think of anything and want only to lay my face in your lap, feel your hand on my head and remain like that through all eternity. I'm doing badly. I'm doing well, whichever you prefer. In a way, you are poetry material, you are full of cloudy subtleties I am willing to spend a lifetime figuring out. Words burst in your essence and you carry their dust in the pores of your ethereal individuality. People label themselves with all sorts of adjectives. I can only pronounce myself as nauseatingly miserable beyond repair. I cannot make you understand. I cannot make anyone understand what is happening inside me. I cannot even explain it to myself. Just because your doctor has a name for your condition, doesn't mean he knows what it is. I usually solve problems by letting them devour me. I want in fact more of you. In my mind I am dressing you with light, I am wrapping you up in blankets of complete acceptance and then I give myself to you. I long for you, I who usually long without longing, as though I am unconscious and absorbed in neutrality and apathy, really, utterly long for every bit of you. I am constantly trying to communicate something incommunicable, to explain something inexplicable, to tell about something I only feel in my bones and which can only be experienced in those bones. Basically it is nothing other than this fear we have so often talked about, but fear spread to everything, fear of the greatest as of the smallest, fear, paralyzing fear of pronouncing a word. Although this fear may not only be fear but also a longing for something greater than all that is fearful. He who seeks does not find, but he who does not seek will be found. By believing passionately in something that still does not exist, we create it. The non-existent is whatever we have not sufficiently desired. There are only two things. Truth and lies. Truth is indivisible, hence it cannot recognize itself, anyone who wants to recognize it has to be a lie. Youth is happy because it has the ability to see beauty. 
Anyone who keeps the ability to see beauty never grows old. You can hold yourself back from the sufferings of the world, that is something you are free to do and it accords with your nature, but perhaps this very holding back is the one suffering you could avoid. I write differently from what I speak, I speak differently from what I think, I think differently from the way I ought to think, and so it all proceeds into deepest darkness. Writing is utter solitude, the descent into the cold abyss of oneself. I am in chains. Don't touch my chains. There is an infinite amount of hope in the universe, but not for us. A first sign of the beginning of understanding is the wish to die. Sleep is the most innocent creature there is and a sleepless man the most guilty. Self-control is something for which I do not strive. Self-control means wanting to be effective at some random point in the infinite radiations of my spiritual existence. For humans the idea of freedom is all too often a means of deceiving themselves. And although freedom is among the most exalted of feelings, so is the illusion of freedom among the most exalted of illusions. Yet even if I manage that, one single slip, and a slip cannot be avoided, will stop the whole process, easy and painful alike, and I will have to shrink back into my own circle again. The books we need are of the kind that act upon us like a misfortune, that makes us suffer like the death of someone we love more than ourselves, that make us feel as though we were on the verge of suicide lost in a forest remote from all human habitation. Should I be grateful or should I curse the fact that despite all misfortune I can still feel love, an unearthly love but still for earthly objects? Time is short, my strength is limited, the office is a horror, the apartment is noisy, and if a pleasant, straightforward life is not possible then one must try to wriggle through by subtle maneuvers. I know of no greater happiness than to be with you all the time, without interruption, without end. Love has as few problems as a motor car. The only problems are the driver, the passengers, and the road. Woman, or more precisely put, perhaps, marriage is the representative of life with which you are meant to come to terms.